Hello there. So I'm going to continue my review and this is going to be for the second half of chapter three. Um, I gotta say, I really want to keep reading. It's really getting very interesting. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, recap. Um, the very end of chapter three, some very funny things happen. Um, so there's definitely a lot of uh, humor involved and I think there's some very interesting things I would love to see done in the movie and I think they could pull it off really well and I think it would really emphasize a lot of you know Katniss's inner struggle or something like that not really inner struggle but anyway I'll get into that so the first thing I would talk about is that um we learn a little bit about Katniss and how she's in love with her dad and I, I'm just kidding, but, you know, she really respects him a lot. And apparently he was, like, you know, the perfect dad. And um, I guess, you know, he used to, s well, I'll get into the whole birds things, but he used to, like, sing in the forest or whatever. And all the birds would listen to him and, like, um, you know, sing back with him. I thought that was, that was okay. You know, I was like, whatever. And I think this would be a very excellent thing to put in the movie and they could do it really well just to see, you know, her dad, you know, singing, you know, to the birds and everything and her being all sad about it. And because she said that she, you know, whenever he, he heard, she heard her sing, she felt like laughing and crying at the same time. So be, I think that'd be a really cool scene to see him like singing or whatever and then them singing back and whatever. I think that'd be a really interesting scene to see. And it'd be kind of, it'd be kind of, it'd be nice. I think that'd be a very excellent thing to put in a movie. So anyway, that would be my first thing I want to put in the movie. And about her dad. So her dad seemed like a nice guy, and it seems like a lot of people respected him. Um, and I wonder if he... Um, I wonder if he played some kind of significant role later. Like, maybe he did something while he was alive that she didn't know about that somehow contributes to something. I, I wonder if it's just that's it. He's just a good dad, or if he was respected for another reason. You know, maybe he was trying to lead a rebellion or something like that. And maybe, maybe that mine explosion really wasn't an accident. You know, I, those are just some predictions. It could be, it could be, it could just be that he's just an awesome dad, and that's pretty much the end of the story. But I think that'd be interesting. Because I, I was wondering why everyone respected him so much. Um, I mean, he's just a mine worker, but who, you know, who knows? So, um, so a funny thing that happens in the story is, uh, Katniss goes. You know, on, she's on the train and she gets all these luxuries um, that she's never had before. And I guess she f gets a meal in front of her that's just absolutely, you know, like nothing she's ever seen. Like, you know, she gets like mashed potatoes and everything. Stuff that basically you would find in your refrigerator. She's, you know, seeing and eating for the first time. So she's basically stuffing herself. And one of the cool things I like that Katniss actually did in this chapter is that she... I guess uh, that character Effie something, the girl from the Capitol, she was like, oh, you're eating with manners at least. Uh, two other, um, you know, tributes from District 12, uh, and they, they came here and they just ate like savages with their fingers. And she was like, she was like, that's repulsive or whatever. And then I like how Katniss was just like, you know, those two kids had never had any good enough amount of food in their life. You know, so she she could understand them. I actually like that. And then what's even funnier is that she actually was like, oh, you know, she didn't say this out loud, but she was like, oh, you, you don't like it when people eat with their fingers? And I guess she just starts eating with their fingers. I think that would be a really funny moment in the movie, like, just to see that uh, Capital Girl's reaction, Effie, just seeing her just be like, oh, yeah, repulsive? Okay, well, how about this? I think that would be pretty funny. And I really like that uh, Katniss did that. She actually stood up for, you know, her homies from District 12. Um, so, I actually don't think I have anything bad to say about Katniss this chapter. Um, one of the things I think that's actually good about Katniss is that, she in, in this chapter at least, is that, um, well, it's about a story. I guess the pin that mage gave Katniss before she left to, you know, remind her of home, it kind of has an interesting way of reminding of her dad. And the thing in the middle is actually a bird called a mockingjay. And the mockingjay is, 
Yeah, I'll get into that. But anyway, it it kind of reminds her of her father when, like I said earlier, he used to sing and everything. The birds that would kind of sing back with them were the mocking jays. So it's kind of interesting how she first looked at this golden pin being like, oh, this is just, you know, extra, you know, equipment I have to carry. But now she actually's like, oh, you know, this reminds me of my dad, you know, whatever. So I like that. I like that she's actually, you know, whatever. So, and another thing, another scene I would like to see in the movie that I think would really go well with like some music in the background and this isn't perverted at all but like just her taking a shower and the reason um i say that is because you know like you know you can imagine someone that is so poor they've never had like a a hot shower any kind of shower really so you know it's kind of cool to see and i like how she described it in the book she's like you know oh this is like rain but it's warm and everything and I like that, you know, that most of the time whenever she was, when it was rain, you know, she was freezing to death. So it's kind of cool. I think it'd be a cool scene to see her just be like totally in bliss in the, the shower or whatever. And maybe even, um, you know, when she's eating or something, you know, it's, it's kind of cool to see that, you know, reaction to getting something you've never had before that we, we all think is just common. I mean, maybe not all the shower, but, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So... And then another one, uh, okay, so that's pretty much all I have about Katniss. Something bad about Katniss, surprisingly. Um, And yeah, apparently her dad sings really well. And these Mockingjays are, it's actually the name, of I think, of the second or third book, so I, I wonder if that has something to do with, I mean, what we're learning now about these Mockingjays, I wonder if that has something to do with what's going on. But anyway, I'll get into the Mockingjays in a second. Uh. So, mm -hmm, let's see, what else happened? Okay, okay, okay. I gotta say, this character, Hey Mitch Abernathy, is probably my favorite. I just love how he's always making an ass out of himself. Like, you know, on TV, the commentators were like, oh, yeah, District 12, they're uh, they're interesting. And then he just falls off the stage and, you know, whatever. But, um, okay, well, first talking to this. Okay, so, and then, um... I guess he walks into the room where they're eating and he's just like, oh, did I miss something? And just throws up and just passes out in his vomit. Like, that's just, this guy is great. Like, this guy is just, I don't know. I think it's kind of obvious the reason why he's drunk all the time is probably because he just wants to forget about everything that happened. At least that's what I can imagine. And, you know, now that I think about it, it's not just, you know, he had to deal with the memories. He has to keep doing this with the capital. Like, he has to keep, you know, helping tributes from his district basically go out and die. I mean, he's not helping them die, but, you know, he he meets all these kids, and then he knows that they're just going to die later. So I have to say that I can totally understand him being drunk, and I, I think it sucks that, you know, that's what he has to deal with. And it sucks that they kind of make you care and take care of the past tributes that sucks um so i can totally understand his position but i like how he just makes an ass out of himself but anyway like i said the commentators i guess over the day of reaping since it was televised they they it was funny they said oh i don't know what to make of this silence you know when when effie was like a round of applause for the tributes and they just stood there and they didn't you know applaud and you know they're like so confused by this like oh hmm <laughs> like the, i don't know like their silent protest to them was like, hmm, must be some kind of like, you know, some interesting backward, you know, tradition. Yeah, I love how, I just love it. Like, they couldn't understand why he would even oppose the Capitol. Oh my god, that's funny. Anyway. So. Uh. I think that PETA, when, uh, I guess, um, Hey Mitch was like, you know, they were talking about hey Mitch, the commentators, and Effie was trash talking them. He actually defended him, and I wonder if you know he kind of understands where hey Mitch, if Peter actually understands where hey Mitch is coming from. That's why he kind of defends him, you know, because Effie was saying like, oh yeah, he has no manners, and then he was just Peter was just like, well, he's drunk, you know. So I wonder if maybe he actually defended hey Mitch, and maybe he can understand where he's coming from. I'm not sure. Either way, I, I liked how he defended him. I definitely, and not only is he defending uh, Hamish, I think he's also kind of attacking Effie because Effie was trying to make it sound like you know, you know, like she's whatever. I don't know, like he has bad manners or something, and he was just like, "No, you're a retarded bitch." So I like that. Seriously, this Effie character is probably gonna die in the future. I can just see it happening. 
I could totally see Katniss just ripping her wig off and whatever. I could totally see that happen too, by the way. Just her wig coming off sometime and whatever. Um, I mean, obviously that's foreshadowing the fact that she cares about her wig so much. Obviously it's going to come off and she's going to be bald or some shit. Anyway, so let's move on. Jeez, there's so many things that didn't happen in this chapter that I don't have to go over. <laughs> so apparently I was, you know, I was in one of my earlier videos, I was wondering like, you know, how exactly did the government, you know, attack the rebellion? You know, like, how exactly did they win in the rebellion? You know, if you have probably a million plus people attacking maybe a thousand, you know, you would think that, you know, the majority would come on top. But for some reason, the, you know, that's not the case. And I guess one of the things that they did is they actually used animals as weapons. Like they genetically um, altered some species to actually help them out. And one of those were called the Jabber Jays. And they're like a homing bird and they're like, they're all male. And they memorize whole conversations between people. So whenever they would, they would send them out and they would, you know, gather you know, they'd send them out to districts and then they would gather information about maybe rebels and stuff and then they would come back and then they would know. But I guess whenever the rebels found out, they were like, well, you know, we're just going to feed them lies and stuff. I think that'd be kind of interesting. But I don't know, you know, it says that they um, they were kind of playing a joke on the Capitol, like, you know, oh, fuck you, whatever. But to me, I think they could have definitely used that to their advantage you know, I think that if you would have, if they would have, you know, if the Jabber Jays were to, let's say, go to the Rebel thing, and they were aware that these Jabber Jays were doing this, you know, they could totally set up an ambush and be like, all right, we're going to meet at point A at, you know, 12 o'clock, you know, blah, 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 blah. We're going to send so many important things there. And the Jabber Jay goes back, and then maybe, you know, the Capitol would go in, and they'd be like, oh, okay, we need to attack this place. But then they could just, you know, ambush the Capitol. I mean, they could totally use that their advantage and not play jokes on the Capitol. I think that was kind of dumb on their part, and they could have played that a lot better. You know, you know, it's it's much. I mean, obviously, you can expose something, expose your enemy's weakness, or you can just exploit it. So anyway, something I learned in chess. Anyway, I'm just gonna move on. Uh, so. I guess after the Jabber Jays were considered useless, they were released into the wild, basically to die off. But I guess they mated with mockingbirds, and they created mocking jays, the bird I was talking about earlier. And um, the mocking jays, hmm, well, the mocking jays, I guess, are can do everything except for uh, memorize conversations. They can kind of like memorize melodies and can even go to very crazy tones and pitches in their voice. So they're actually pretty. An interesting bird, and uh, I'm wondering why it's so. Why they would name a book after the mocking jays? I wonder if there's some kind of you know deeper meaning behind these mocking jays, or there's something else. So it's kind of a spoiler to know what the you know the book's name is called, because you know at first you're like okay, cool, mocking jay, whatever, but now it's obviously has some more significance. So that's interesting. I have to look out for that. Um, I don't want to make any predictions now because it'd be basically based on nothing. Um, and I think that the character Effie or whatever, she's kind of stupid. Like she's has that whole etiquette thing, you know. She called those kids savages, and and let me just say, I don't understand that whole etiquette stupid shit. I mean, you gotta face it, we're all animals, um, you know. So that whole etiquette thing to me is just trying to like hide that fact. Like, to me, there's nothing wrong with eating with your fingers. I mean, if you were to wash your hands or whatever, then there should be no problem, you know? Just because it's not manners, it's just so stupid. I mean, you know, that's just dumb to me. People that think, oh, yo, you can't eat with your fingers. That's that's not that's not etiquette. You know, I don't know. It's stupid. I hate etiquette so much, the passion. So, yeah, that's dumb. And, yeah, for them, for her to call them savages, I don't know. Just for eating with their fingers. I, I think that's dumb. So anyway. I don't know. She She's just like totally into herself. I mean it's kind of obvious. So. Um, so Mockingjay. Right, right. Um, I think there's. That's pretty much all there is about the Mockingjay. Okay, so let me get into who's their competition. Now let me just say. This is going to be negative. The author, I have to say. Very disappointing. 
Now, here's the thing. I don't know. You know, you could use the excuse that, you know, it's not the author's fault. It's just Katniss's perspective. But, I mean, this isn't, you know, reality. You know, you can change this. And what, what I'm talking about is the descriptions of these people that are in the Hunger Games with them. Now, keep in mind, these are just on television. You know, she hasn't actually seen them face to face yet. But her one, the one person she says, she he, she, he, she says a monstrous boy from District 2. Um, what exactly is monstrous? Does that mean he's, you know, strong looking? Does that mean he has like scars on his face? I mean, what exactly makes him monstrous? I mean, see, that's what I don't like about descriptions like this, you know? Like, yes, I can imagine my own little thing. You know, I can imagine, you know, some kind of you know, rough looking Hulk Hogan dude, but you know, I would rather someone just kind of describe it so I have an idea. I don't know. See, I just don't like descriptions like monstrous or hot or a man, you know, especially this other one, Fox Face Girl. I mean, I guess it's kind of descriptive. I mean, she's on the right track. Okay, she has a fox face. But that's it, you know? Like, oh, okay, she's she has a fox face. All right. Oh, and then sleek red hair. Okay, actually, you're right. Um, sleek red hair, that's that's okay. That's okay. Alright. So, and then here's another one. Boy with a crippled foot. Well, that's very descriptive. And he's from District 12. Um, 12-year-old girl. Okay, I don't understand how she knows that. Like, that was... By the way, all these are just other contestants she saw on the TV. And then one of them, she says, yeah, a 12-year-old girl. I don't know exactly how she knows she's 12 years old. I mean... Um, I don't know if they announced the age, maybe, because otherwise I'd be like, how the hell do you know she's 12 years old? And she's, obvi- she's she says that she's very much like prim, but basically brown, and <laughs> I'm not trying to be racist or anything, and also, I think it's kind of foreshadowing that maybe Katniss will probably look out for this girl, clearly, I think, and then I think she's going to die. Anyway. And she's from District 11. I don't think that's any significance. I'm noticing, though, that the higher up the districts, the more shittier it is, it seems. Like a boy with a crippled foot from District 12. I mean, if he's injured, you know, whatever. And then the fo- the little girl, whatever, no one volunteered for her. And that shows that, you know, no one cares. So that's District 11. So maybe the higher the districts, the poorer they are. I'm not sure. So now that's pretty much it. Now let me just get into one little thing. And this has to do with, unfortunately, the author. There are a lot of spelling errors in this book, and there's a lot of gr- uh, grammatically incorrect things. And I'm gonna, you know, I, I noticed them, but I didn't try and keep track of them. But I decided to keep track of them for now on. Um, uh, one I saw. Let me see. It was on page 43, and here's the thing. This is what it says. Now, tell me if this makes sense to you. You know, I want you to, you know, want you to listen. Tell me if this actually makes sense. If you had the patience to sing them if they liked your voice. That's what it says. That's not a grammatically correct sentence. If it said, if you had the patience to sing to them, you know. But she miss, she. there's so many instances where there's words missing. And there was another one, too. I can't remember. Um, I, I don't want to look for it, you know, forever. But there was one, like, in Chapter 2 as well that was like, what? You know, like, I couldn't understand what she was... I knew what she was trying to say, but there's words missing. Um, So, another one that I found is this. And it's not, you know, everything's spelled right. But this is, it just doesn't make sense to say. Um, She says, you know... And let me just let me just uh, read you these sentences and tell me, tell me which one doesn't belong. And when they had food, table manners were surely the last things on their mind. Peter's the baker's son. My mother taught Prim and me to eat properly. So, if you haven't caught it, it's that whole Peter's a baker's son. This is the sentence. Peter's a baker's son. What's the purpose of this sentence? It's just there. You know, it's just like, oh, okay, Peter's a baker's son. Oh, all right. We're talking about table manners. And if she's trying to get at, oh, well, Peter has you know, table manners because he's a baker's son, you know, you could reword that in such an easier way than just saying, Peter's a baker's son, period. And you could say, you know, my mom taught me and Peter's a baker's son, so we both know how to eat properly. You know, you could say something like that. But instead, she just says, Peter's a baker's son, period. It just doesn't make sense to say that. You know, like, it's just, 
the sentence doesn't accomplish anything, you know? Like, yes, you, I know what she's saying, but then she does so many things. I'm going to start keeping track because there's a lot of things that she says, and I'd be like, wait, that doesn't make sense. Why would you say that? You know, the way you phrase it is kind of dumb. Like, ah, uh, there's so many examples. I, I'll start and keep track from now on. But anyway, I mean, it's not like, you know, this is a terrible book because of that or something like that. It's just kind of, like, distracting, you know? But it's whatever. Anyway. That's it. Bye-bye.